Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Matt Overwine from the Office of Instructional Design at Northern Kentucky University, uh, sitting in Mike Lavi's office, which does most of the tutorials here. I'm going to do a short tutorial today, or short-ish tutorial today, on how to make a pose and make a animation in Second Life. Now, these are, aren't going to be very polished. We're just going to do very, very basic things. You could spend all day working on these things. So um, I'll go ahead and navigate to the program's web page that we're going to be using. We're going to be using QAvimator, which is spelled like that, Q-A-V-I-M-A-T-O-R, if you can't see it. I'm going to go and hit enter, and it should be the top pick here. You can see that I've already linked to it once before. Uh, just go ahead and navigate there and download the program. It's very easy. There's actually tutorials on here to use, but I did, we just figured we'd put up one to show you how to do it our way. So go ahead and download. And then just choose your different choose of the different versions you have here. We would download the Windows one, and I also have the Mac one on my Mac. So grab whichever one you need and install that as you would any other program. I'm going to go ahead and open that. This should be about what you see when you open the program for the first time. Uh, there are a lot of different options here with the skeletal character here, or not skeletal, but with the character here. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a pose, which is very easy. Um, pretty much you're just going to knock down the amount of frames that you use from the standard 30 to 2 instead. That way you just have an original pose and then the pose you want. You can't see the bottom of the full Q-Avimator screen, so I'm going to drag this up a little bit so you guys can see this. Um, as you can see, you have all the different body parts here. And you can click on those, and you should, or right, click on them out here, I'm sorry. And you should see as they highlight, you really don't want the first frame, but this is the second frame. Uh, and you can see the red line is whatever, whatever, whichever frame you're on. There's not a number there, but it tells you down here in the right uh, what frame you're on. So we're on 2 of 30, and it's a 30 frames per second. So if you have 30 frames and it's 30 frames per second, that means that's one second worth of frames. Uh, since we're doing a, just a pose the first time, we're going to do go ahead and get rid of most of these frames. Just put it as two frames. So now you see the frame area shrink down. Now it's just one, one frame. So now we're just going to go ahead and make whichever uh, pose we want. There's not much else to making a pose. Uh, you can just grab the different body parts. You can click on them. I like to click on them and use these sliders over here, but you can also hold shift or shift, alt, or control, and you can see the different um, vertexes, axes, uh, highlighting up there as I do that. There's, there's that one, there's the red, blue. So, um, just for an example, we're going to, um, we're going to make a, we'll make a sitting position here. Uh, one thing to note is that the hip area is, is the, is the point that you can move around the avatar and raise it up and down. I don't know the best way to really describe that, but as you can see, as I drag this, it actually moves the entire avatar. When you select other areas, you don't have that option. That's just for the hips. That's, that's one thing to keep in mind. So if we want someone to be sitting, we're going to go ahead and uh, you can drag the view around just by clicking anywhere off of the avatar there. But you can click on a leg and then just figure out which axis you need to move. This, for instance, there, the x-axis seems to be the one if we're going to make a sitting pose. Uh, then we're going to move this. I imagine it'll be the same x-axis there. Already, this is, you guys can see that this is pretty easy. Um, go ahead and move that other leg up. Try to match it up a little bit. Move it around. We don't want their arms to be flying here, so we'll move the all right, so I don't want the x-axis there. Moving forward, this is probably the one we want. We can make the arms look a little more natural here. Not really doing much there. Hmm, not very natural looking, so... You can tool around with this all day to see exactly what you want. Um, I would suggest finding a pose that you really want to work with and getting down to it. 
but I'm just going to go ahead and generalize so we can move on to the animation part. So there you have a basic sitting animation, uh, not too special. Second Life already has sec uh, sitting animation or pose built in, but you know you could do any number of things this way. So now that we have the pose we want, um, we can pretty much just go ahead and save this. I'm going to pull this down so you can see the save menu. I'm going to file, save as. All right. Now the type of animation file that Second Life uses is a BVH file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just name this sitting dot instead of the AVM we want BVH. BVH stands for let's see think bio bio version. Hmm, I learned it on the Second Life wiki, which maybe I'll go ahead and bring up right now, just so you guys can see. If you want to know a little bit more about the Second Life animations and uh, all the different properties that we may or may not mention in this tutorial, you can just go to the Second Life Wiki. It uh, looks like the How to Create Animations page. And there's a lot of useful information here on what you can do and what each of the parameters means. Uh, also, it mentions like the hip to top. Hip is the top of the hierarchy. Uh, but the BVH file stands for BioVision Hierarchy File. So that's you can explore this more if you wish. I'm going to go ahead and move on. So now that I have a name to sitting BVH, I'm going to go and save it on my desktop. And we'll upload that about the same time we upload the animation. So now let's go ahead and make an animation. First I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. So now we have 30 frames per second again, uh, which I can mess around with now. I'm going to go ahead and drag this up so we can see different parts. All right. So now we're going to just do a basic animation. Uh, drag around to where you can see the, anima the uh, figure as, as you want to. And think of a random an animation you want to work with. Well, for this, I think we're just going to do a, a really high wave just so we can, <laughs> so it can be easy. I guess I'll drag this down so we can see this a little better. So for the wave, we're going to zoom out a little bit. I'm using my mouse wheel to do that. Standing like this is fine. So we're going to go ahead and just put down one of the arms because we don't really need the entire, uh, or both arms to be waving. So let's put one down as if it is at rest. And then the other arm is the one we're going to be waving with. Now this is where I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you about keyframes. Keyframes are a specific point at which the animation or the figure is, has changed its, its body, its different body parts and th this will help us to animate very easily. So think of the starting and ending points of what you want to do in the animation. Pretty much a wave is just moving an arm from one point to the other and then back. That's pretty much a wave. So that's what we're going to do. First let's start at the, well this is the first frame of our animation so let's go ahead and put them at the, I guess the resting point we'll call it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the arm down as if it's not waving. Close enough there. So that's our that's our first frame, and the keyframe button is already pushed push down here, so you can tell that it's already working. Now, as I said before, this is 30 frames that we have here, and it's at 30 frames per second, so it'll take one second to wave. I'm going to bump up the number of frames to, we'll say, 90, so that we can have a three-second wave. Makes a little more sense. Um, it may not look perfect, but it's going to be a little better than as, as if, eh, better than if it was a 30 frame, one second animation. So I'm going to hit tab so that will work there. All right. I can drag this little bar here to go through all the different frames, and it, it'll list the frame number down here at the bottom as you drag it along. 
Here's the end of the animation. So I'll split the, the frames in half. So 90 and, 90 and half is 45. That's going to be the midpoint of my animation. So I'm going to go ahead and make a keyframe there. Navigate to 45 here. Just using that bottom slider. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the keyframe button to make a keyframe. And it marks it. I have the right shoulder clicked right there, but as I click, as I choose a different body part, it will add another dot to this showing that that's definitely changed. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll move that shoulder as up to like it's raising in the air and waving. Raise this up. I'm going to turn it to be facing us a little more. 